our next grouping of new and enhanced features is data entry and reporting. There are four enhancements in this grouping, the intercompany transactions, mileage tracker, enhancements to accounts receivable reporting, and enhanced banking connections. Intercompany transactions are, in my opinion, the biggest well of the bunch here, although I believe there's more development to come on this feature. Now, as, as many pro advisors know, Enterprise is used most often by larger clients, including those that have multiple legal entities that have intercompany funds going back and forth among them. Intercompany transactions are available in QuickBooks Denter, uh, Desktop Enterprise, Platinum and Diamond subscriptions for 23, and Enterprise Accountant for 23. They are a connected service, and this feature requires that the related companies share the same Intuit user ID email account. So back in our company here, we can go into company, my company, and then click on manage your account to manage the email address. You can see the email address that I have associated with this company. Or you can select F2 on your keyboard. And in the top right section of the product information window, we will see the primary admin's Intuit user ID email account associated with the file. Now, after logging in to each related file and ensuring each has the same primary admin Intuit account, we can create the relationship. Then we go into company, intercompany transactions to set up the relationships. We're going to use two enterprise companies here. Okay, so once the relationship is set up, you'll be able to create intercompany transactions, including vendor bills and company checks, but no other transaction types such as invoices at this time. So I think there's more development on this feature to come as well. And that automates the entry between these two QuickBooks company files. This new feature reduces the need for duplication of effort. It allows you to easily establish and manage relationships among business entities via a dashboard. You can track transactions across business entities by assigning assets and liabilities accounts. We have the power to approve or reject both the intercompany relationships that are, are being set up, as well as the transactions after the relationships are approved. You can reduce manual entry and simplify tracking by entering bulk transactions, and you can create intercompany transaction reports for better insight on completed historical transactions. So for example, company A here has the lavender color scheme. <clears throat> it pays a vendor bill on behalf of company B, which will show soon in pink. The bill is created in lavender A as a non-posting transaction. No general ledger accounting for this vendor bill takes place in Lavender Company A's books until Pink Company B approves the bill. Now, it's really hard to switch between the two companies, so I've done it already and recorded screenshots for you. So I've got these two companies set up already, Esther's Rock Castle Construction, which is Company A in Lavender, and then you'll see EFK Enterprises Company B, which you'll see in pink and they both have the same Intuit user ID. In Lavender Company A, also known as Rock, Esther's Rock Castle Construction, I went into Company, Intercompany Transactions, and chose the destination company file, Pink Company B, also known as EFK Enterprises. That Pink Company B file was even there to select its radio button because it has the same Intuit user ID as Lavender Company A. I then selected Continue. Next, once I chose that other company, I had to set up the intercompany accounts on Lavender A's chart of accounts as they relate to Pink Company B. In this case, I chose the do from and the do to as the same account, but I didn't have to do that if I didn't want to. Now, I set it up do from EFK Enterprises, and I've set it up as an other asset type of account, and then I selected send request. Still in Lavender Company A, after I click on select requests, send requests, I, I get this notification that Pink Company B is going to get a request to be associated with Lavender Company A. 
Now I can click OK here or X out of it or cancel, but of course I clicked OK. Once I've clicked OK, I see that there's a pending request that was sent to the other company, to pin company B, and it stays that way unless and until it's accepted or rejected at the other end. It's in the intercompany transaction screen using the relationships tab and the sent for approval area. Now I've logged into the other company, Pink Company B, and I'm in company intercompany transactions there as well. Uh, I'm in the intercompany transaction screen using that relationships tab and the pending my approval section. And I see that there's a pending my approval request from Lavender Company A, also known as Esther's Rock Castle. And I select approve from the action columns drop down. And I have to set up the corresponding intercompany report accounts on Pink Company B side as they relate to Company A. Takes me to this screen after I approve the uh, relationship. Uh, and I, I set up a due to Esther's Rock Castle account. I set it up as an other current liability. I mean, the other one I set up as another asset. I just wanted to show you I can use different types of accounts. And I use it for the due to and the due from account. And then I selected approve relationship. Now I see the relationship created confirmation screen in Pink Company B and I can click OK. Now I've taken screenshots of the approved section in the relationships tab of the intercompany transaction section of both companies here. For each company, Pink B on the left and Lavender A on the right, I see the other company as well as the due from account and the due to account. And I can click on edit to change those accounts in either company. Okay, now let's take a look at how this works now that the relationship is set up and approved. This is the bill that Lavender Company A entered to be paid on behalf of Pink Company B. In Lavender Company A, I open up a bill or it could be a check. And before I do anything else, I click on intercompany transactions. And we see that the first column header in the detail area changes to company rather than account, and there is no items tab. So I chose EFK Enterprises. There was a drop down here. Um, and remember, that's <laughs> King Company B. Now, there could be other companies listed there as well if I'd set them up. And then the account, once I chose EFK Enterprises, the account due from EFK Enterprises populates automatically. I enter the other information such as the date, the amount, the memo if needed, and the bill number. I see the intercompany transaction badge and the fact that it's not yet sent just above the detail information grid at the bottom of the transaction. I can't have multiple allocations in this line. Uh, warning to that effect will appear if I try to save it with more than one line. I would dearly love to see this improved to allow for multiple lines on an entry. Okay, so in Lavender Company A, I go back into Company, Intercompany Transactions. I can click on the Transactions tab now, and I can uh, select the Sent for Approval section. I see that there's this pending bill. And on the flip side, in Pink B, if I go into Company, Intercompany Transactions, I'm in the Transactions tab, and I select the Pending My Approval section, I see that there's this pending bill which I can approve or reject from the drop down in the action column. Now here, if I'm going to approve it, it makes me obviously select a general ledger account that would hit the books. So I chose auto and truck expenses that needs to be recorded on pink company B side. And then I select approve. If there were multiple transactions listed here, I could, uh, I could uh, approve all of them. I could batch approve them. Now that it's approved by Pink Company B, that bill is no longer in the pending my approval section. Instead, I find it in the approved section and I can click on view in the action column and it will take me to the general journal entry created automatically in Pink Company B and I can also click on view report. So if I clicked on view, I see the entry. It's a general journal entry. Remember, I had to select that GL account. I chose auto and truck expenses, so that's what it's picking up here. The name of the vendor populates the memo, which I don't love. I wish it could populate the name column instead, and I can see that it's an intercompany transaction. Now, if I, if I clicked instead on view report, 
instead of view, then what I would see is the intercompany transactions report from the point of view of pink company B. Now I flipped to lavender A and gone into intercompany transactions and I've clicked on the transactions tab and clicked on approve <laughs> and I see the original bill there and I can click on view in the action column to see it or I can click on view report. If I click on view, that takes me back to the bill, but this time I see it's approved. And if I uh, and I could click on the intercompany transactions in the ribbon at the top, and that would take me back to the intercompany transactions area where I could click on view report. And after I click on view report, I see the intercompany transactions report from the point of view of Lavender Company A. That was a mouthful. Uh, next up is data entry and reporting. Uh, we need to do a poll there. Okay, go ahead. Actually, go ahead. Gary, we want to know. Uh, yep. Uh, we want to know how many of you are using or attempting to use the uh, new intercompany transactions feature. This is undoubtedly not only the uh, most. Uh, sophisticated of the new features, but also the most complicated it of is. the new feature. And uh, hopefully, uh, I think uh, Esther and I are going to try to uh, Deeper do another dive. webinar yeah. on this, in which we actually uh, have two companies live and are working back and forth uh, with a variety of transactions uh, between uh, two companies live. Oh. Well, what do you know? More up? people are trying I'm to shocked. use this than, wow. than the other two, so. Wow, okay. Um, I know we're short on time, so I'm gonna get cracking. Next up is data entry and reporting. Uh, we have the mat and the mileage tracker, which while it isn't new, it is improved at now that there's a mobile app for iOS phones. This is include this is included with uh, the entire desktop lineup from Pro Plus on up, um, and it's uh, requires a connection and a login to an Intuit account. Note that the track mileage mobile functionality is only available on iOS enabled mobile phones for desktop company file uh, files starting with the 2023 version year. I do believe that an Android app is coming soon. I can record, track, and view business mileage efficiently in a single place via the desktop or the iOS-enabled app, so I can accurately report to the IRS and charge back customers on their invoices. I can simplify end of year of taxes by consolidating mileage data on all business trips automatically by accessing the latest IRS rates to calculate deductions. I can accurately charge back customers by providing them with detailed mileage logs with trip locations. And I can also manage expenses by easily viewing, tracking and running a report of all business trips in a single place. In the desktop, I can access this feature by selecting company track vehicle mileage. Now, the first time I did that, where are you? The first time I did that, I, uh, I was given, uh, I did so in a given company in version 2023, I also saw instructions to go into the app store and download the QuickBooks desktop mobile app so that I can uh, track mileage for this company from my iPhone. There's a new reporting enhancement in QuickBooks desktop enterprise and enterprise account in 23. It's the ability to run an AR aging detail report. I think it applies to the summary report as well, but the detail uh, one is just so much uh, more obvious because it's such a huge report. It's the ability to run an AR aging detail report in seconds rather than setting it up to run and then going for a cup of coffee because it's going to take a while to load up. As we all know, enterprise companies generally have a lot of data and running reports like the AR aging detail takes a lot of computing power because there's a lot of information to display. Our clients can take timely action by gaining faster insight into aging and outstanding customer invoices, and then therefore get paid faster. They can prepare accounts receivable aging detail reports the way they always do, but this time they can stick around as it will display very quickly. 
In the same data entry and reporting grouping, there are now enhanced banking connections, and they're available in all desktop 23 versions, uh, from Pro Plus all the way on up. Clients can save time with automated bank feeds, which means they don't have to take the time to import banking data manually. Now, although this feature does vary from institution to institution, and some banks may not yet support this technology, there's now encryption technology added for extra security, and you can access bank feeds by selecting banking, bank feeds, set up bank feeds for an account. So what is the bottom line in here for all these enhancements? Do, uh, do we have any more polling questions, Merv? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Hot diggity. So my, in my humble opinion, Intuit's commitment to desktop enterprise, uh, desktop and in particular enterprise continues to grow. They wouldn't invest, they just wouldn't invest this kind of time, effort, and money, let's face it, to enhance the features if they didn't. And as an avid user of desktop and as an Intuit shareholder, I am very happy to hear that. You can access the QuickBooks Enterprise in depth guide for 2023 at this URL.